Legend of Total here, and today we've got a Rating Your Doomstag video covering a Avalorn Flammable Phoenix Spam Doomstag. So, we've got seven wizards in here, an Arc Mage and a, uh, a Law Master of Hoeth. We've got 12 Arcane Phoenixes. Now, all of their traits, I believe, are flammable, and what that does is it gives 5% extra ward save to Arcane Phoenix, or to, sorry, just to Phoenixes in general. So, these here have 40% uh, ward save. Now, on top of that, when the battle begins, as long as we keep our magic, our, like a current magic, above 15, they'll always have that 12% damage re resistance on top of that. So they'll go up to 52% damage resistance. We're going up against four full armies of the Warriors of Chaos, which they're a bit of a joke to deal with. They're just largely full of melee infantry. There's certainly more difficult enemies to go up against. We could really just auto-resolve this, but let's just see how strong they actually are when we go into melee. I mean, we could easily just use magic to burn the crap out of them, but let's just see how it performs anyway. So I'm assuming that this wizard here, it... Oh, you didn't get any life wizards. Yeah, you definitely should have put this one as a life wizard. Oh, I, I see, I see. You use the, um, the Lore Master of Hoeth for life magic, for healing. I, I see. I just, I think that maybe seven fire wizards is maybe a bit excessive. This was, uh... Oh wait, 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 no, 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 it is life. It is life. Oh, I don't know. When I hovered over it, over it before, it, it said it was fire. Um, no, it's life. All right, that's good. All right, now I'm just gonna keep him out of it. And first thing I want to do is send in the phoenixes. All right, so when we start off the battle here, we're not gonna get this. Okay, so when it says disabled of mana is less than fifty percent, it's not about magic reserves. So, it doesn't matter if your magic reserves are zero, it matters about how much magic you've actually got. Um, it doesn't make that very clear, but basically if you've got 15 or more magic, it'll activate. And we'll showcase that by starting the battle. We'll see that it... Oh, we've also got the Diamond Guardian Felix, like Phoenix. So, as the magic generates, you'll see that... Hang on, let's just get some Arcane Condors to speed it up a bit. Just one. Once we hit 15, this will trigger. There it is. See? So that's what that's about. Okay. Let's send in the Phoenixes. And with 52% ward save, let's see how they do. Now, I believe that Phoenixes are actually stronger than Dragons if you stack on the right buffs currently in the game. Especially Arcane Phoenixes. They're really, really tough. When you go up against Arcane Phoenixes, they're possibly one of the most annoying units in the game to deal with. Alright, now we're going to see just how much they can handle sending them into melee. Now, we could easily just send in the Fire Wizards to go and burn them. But we want to see just, you know, how much they can handle. And they've also got... Hang on. They've also got some magic resistance as well. So, looking at total resistances, alright... With additional 37% on top of that, what's that, 89%? 89% physical resistance. Then there's fire resistance, of course. So that would be 62% uh, magic resistance. Alright, cool. So they're almost at the cap for physical resistance. If you had one more flammable wizard... Ah, right, that's why you've got the Lord Master of Hoeth. You need somebody on the ground. Right as well. And this guy's probably exhilarated, giving them extra, like, 12 melee defense. I mean, I'll have to check after the battle to see what their, their stats are. So ideally here, we just want to see how much the phoenixes can handle on their own. And I'll just support them with life magic. We could also pop down Shield of Thorns to give them, essentially, 1% extra physical resistance. And all we're going to do here is is uh, just make sure we don't spend any more than 16 wins of magic at any given time. Hey! I'm just observing. Bitch. So, yeah, they're taking, like, no damage here. 
And of course, if you had a Sapphire Guardian Phoenix on one of these, um, on one of these mages here, then you'd also have some additional magic resistance. So that's one way you can make him a bit tougher. But yeah, they just can't do any damage to him. High melee defense and high ward save, like. Like, they're getting hit for, like, four damage a pop, which is really low. It's so strong. But, yeah. So, the reason why we don't use Shield of Thorns is because, like, 1% extra physical resistance. I just don't... What's, what's the point? Let's get one of them out of here and use some Ember Storms. So yeah, I want to try to rely just on the Phoenixes in this battle and not use any magic apart from life magic. But, you know, if things are getting too slow, then we'll just, you know, speed up the process with a few Flame Storms. I mean, I could use Dwellers Below. That actually might be better. And then just keep them alive. And we've got so much magic reserves that it's just easy to do that. I think this would be really good versus the Dark Elves. Alright, let's get another one out and use another Ember Storm. Another nice big blob over here. And we'll see how much damage they've done by the end of the battle. Doesn't want to let us up. Let's pick a different one. Thing is, with the uh, Hell Cannon here, it might be in our best interest to just leave it there. Because the more they shoot us, they're probably going to hit their own units as well. Just to help speed things up a bit. So tanky. This is on very hard battle difficulty. And all these guys have maximum experience. And there isn't really a, a lot of better armies to go up against in melee. Than Warriors of Chaos. Like if you've got a full ranged army. The Warriors of Chaos are a joke. But we're, we're fighting them at their advantage. With their you know, supposed advantage. You know they've got... Do they have anti- yeah, they got anti-large Chaos Warriors in there, and they're just doing nothing. And we're kind of getting spread out a little bit here. You need to move closer together so you don't get surrounded. Lowers their melee defense if they get hit in the back. Now, of course, the thing is with Phoenix is you don't need to use heal magic on them because if they fall below what ten was it you know, ten or twenty percent health uh, before below twenty percent sorry ten percent health and they'll um, revive themselves well 50 50 chance of that I probably wouldn't risk it All right, I've had enough of your your bullshit. None of, none of this Hell Cannon crap. Let's get rid of it. If you fly right over a Hell Cannon... No, I'm not quite right over it. And... Pop a Breath Attack on it. It'll usually destroy it in one go. No toys for you.
But yeah, we probably could have won the battle by now if I chucked down just a couple of dwellers below. But we really wanted to see just how long they can they can stay in fight. So let's just pick one at random and see how much damage they've taken. So it's only taken a thousand damage so far. And in total, they have about like twelve thousand hit points essentially. If you use up all of their their health regen. Which would be very easy to do. Getting bored. It's very strong. This is so much stronger than a dragon boomstack, I reckon. Because, yeah, that's the thing. That's the big disadvantage of dragons. Sure, they hit hard and they look cool, but. It's really difficult to make dragons like immune to damage, and that's where phoenixes can really get the advantage over dragons. Also, dragons are just so easy to shoot. I mean, that's not really an issue when dealing with Warriors of Chaos, uh, and dragons definitely are good at dealing with them because they, they don't have any missiles. But if you're going up against Dark Elves or Dwarfs, dragons are a bad idea because uh, they just they get wrecked. But if you're going up against something like Dwarfs or Dark Elves, Phoenixes are quite hard to hit. Obviously in a, in a blob like this where they're just standing mostly still, they'd be able to hit them. And that's where you'd probably want to use the magic to get rid of their like Dark Shards and Thunderers and whatnot. But still, those guys do physical damage on their missile attacks, so they'd still only do 11% damage on each shot, which isn't that much. Speed it up a bit now. So yeah, looking at them, that one's they just they haven't taken any damage. But in terms of the kills, they're not really getting a lot. But I mean the main purpose of this is obviously to tie most of their forces down and then use magic to finish them off. But I really want to test to see just how much they can take, how long they can hold the enemy down. Like, this is one of the most resilient unit in the game, with this kind of extra ward save on it. Normally heroes would be about, like, really buffed up heroes would be at a tank for this long, and even then they take a lot of damage. not even needing the arcane conduits and like I said just keep the winds of magic above 15 and they get that extra 12 ward save so I think he put in just the perfect number of flammable wizards in here just the exact right number like getting one extra to get that one extra winds of magic is probably not worth it uh, winds of magic uh, one extra ward save and I think it's just important to try to keep the phoenixes from getting surrounded. So every now and again, just tell them to hit something in the center so they, they get in this way. The reason for that, right, if we go in fairly close, see the units in here, they're, uh, they're not able to hit. They're, they're not surrounded, essentially. I mean, they are surrounded, but individually they're not surrounded. So that there's fewer entities attacking them at any, any given time. I mean, this is why, from a you know historical point of view, you know, um, heavy infantry wouldn't fight in loose formation. They just get surrounded. They fought, in, you know, depending on the on the type of unit. But you know, tight formations worked really well because you, you just you're supported by the person next to you and behind you, and you use that same theory when commanding single entities in this. Act as one unit. And if we really wanted to, we certainly could be doing this, but uh, <laughs> what's the point? You know? Well, let's, let's reduce their melee attack, even though they're not really hitting us. 
I mean, yeah. If you're going up against something a little bit more dangerous than this, like, maybe if you're going up against, like, a full Carnosaur army, even then, even if I think, even if you went up against the Rider Primeval Glory army, I really don't see what they could do. Even with all that anti-large and armor piercing, up against 89% physical resistance, plus health regen, and Phoenixes hit pretty hard, especially Arcane Phoenixes. Let's see if we can get another Ember Swarm up in here. Just helps speed up the process a bit. It does more damage than melee, especially in a big infantry blob like this. But yeah, I've had um, Phoenix Doomstack sent in before, but this one's definitely the best one I've seen, I think. I'd say this one is pretty much the perfect stack for uh, Phoenixes. Everything is in the right, am right amounts. Is, you got one, you know, ground unit there to stop them from taking leadership penalties when dealing with like, uh, you know, if you don't want to go into melee straight away. Let's just say you want to waste enemy ammo first. Like if you're going up against a dark elf army, just hide him. Maybe does he have stalk by any chance? If you, yep, yep, you, you're doing all the right things here. This is this is the perfect phoenix doomsday. You got every base covered. He doesn't even need to be in the forest, he can stalk. Life Wizard is the general, that's correct. Um, flammable Fire Wizards, they don't have to be Fire Wizards. But if they weren't Fire Wizards, then they can't have dragons. So making them flying would, would help a bit, I guess. Now if I had sent in these wizards in here in melee with them, Almost guaranteed that they would have taken a ton of damage because they just don't have as much resistance as these phoenixes. And they're bigger targets, so they get hit by, by more units at a time. I love this army, this is great. The only the only thing, and this is just the absolute money grubbing nature that is me. They're not entrepreneurs, so you could be making a lot of money out of them. But, you know, high elves do make so much money, and I've got to be a little bit more lenient towards people that <laughs> don't just go full ham on trying to get a million gold per turn. It doesn't matter that much. I mean, you can get plenty of wizards. Uh, this is like turn 150 or something. Uh, we'll have a look at how things are going in the campaign, how much this is actually costing us. Well, this is very strong. Alright, let's get another Ember Storm in there. And... Flip down. Yeah, Dwellers Below would have sped this up a lot. But like I said, just relying on the Phoenixes. Just want to see if they can do this on their own. Because yeah, that's, that's the real beauty of this army. I'm using it badly, and it's just slaughtering them. So looking at one of them, this is taking 2,000 damage now. This one here, less than 2,000. Basically, the only way that the AI is going to be able to beat this is if they shoot all the wizards out of the sky. So that they don't get any healing. And then for somehow terror, terror wrap them. Like a stinky Nurgle cheese one. But the AI doesn't do that. Yeah, the AI doesn't trait farm. They'll just hire whatever's available. You know, you might encounter one or two in an army that have, like, a pompous trait that reduces leadership, but you'll never encounter any more than that, unless you're, like, unbelievably unlucky. Yeah, they don't have that much mass, though, so if they're completely surrounded, it's hard to get them out.
But that just keep on going. It's tempting to pop this down. Just to just to finish this up. I think we get the point. But I also think we're really close to the army losses. Right, so I'm gonna get you out to use that Ember Storm. Some good spots over here to use it. Alright, there's a, another Hell Cannon. That gives us a good indication that the battle's almost over. Since they're the last to come in. Hopefully it doesn't hit a trick. No, hang on, hang on. I'm not sure that's gonna do it. Oh, there we go. Good. Any more? Yeah, there's another one over here. I'll right, go sort that out. Actually, I'll just get one of the other dragons to do it because they've still got plenty of breaths. You've only got one left. And also, another great thing about this is that you don't need to use Avalon. Avalon's got no specific advantage with uh, Phoenixes, so you can do this with any high elf faction. Still quite a few of them left. What the hell is all these sparkles going on over here? I don't, I don't know. Well, these best, I've never seen that before. What, what, what's causing that? Oh, there must be like the Chaos Knights. They're corpses or something. Yes. Going. Oh, they're still coming in. Surely we're, we've almost finished them off. Double stuck. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, the uh, Sun Dragon breath attack's not as powerful as the Moon Dragon, which is what the uh, the Life Wizard's on. Yeah. All right, there we go. That's gone. There should be one more, I think, because there was four armies. Spirit Leech is something that they could do to, to harm us. Because we're a little bit... We're not, not weak against magic, but we're weaker against magic than anything else. Because, yeah, all damage is broken up into either physical or magic damage. And any other kind of modifier will still fall, fall under those categories. Right, go back over there. Got this as well, but like I said, just let the phoenixes handle it. I just didn't want the hell cannon to try to shoot the general while we're just observing. If they slowed their melee defense, that might actually be better, just so we can speed up the process, kill them a bit quicker. Uh, let me check, do we have a Helm of Discord? Didn't even think to check. We do, alright, I'll get you over here.
Yeah. It's a situation where we could go up against four armies, fight it like an absolute idiot, and still come out with zero damage done to the army. That's a that's a sign of a foolproof idiot proof doom stack. Which is my favorite types. You don't want you don't want anything going wrong. The worst doom stacks are the ones that are difficult to use. Because so much can go wrong with those ones. I mean, they could still be fun to use, but ease of use is definitely a quality. Okay, I think the army losses was just triggered there. Just in time to use the uh, Helm of Discord. They saw it coming, they're like, ah, oh, fuck this. We're out of here. Well, might as well cast the magic now. Behold my power! Oh yeah, there's the other hell cannon. Okay, I'll get the phoenixes to sort that out. Oh, and there's some... Chaos spawn. Not like that's a big deal. And at no point did we even need to use a regrowth. Well, we could have used it to recover their fatigue, but regrowth, it just cost more magic. And they didn't seem to need it. Alright, looking at this, so some of them used up a fair bit of their healing, but I don't think any of them even got to half damage with it. This really is just an indication of why the High Elves are the strongest race in the game. If you activate their full potential, there's just they've got more Doom Stacks than anybody else. They've got the best economy. They've just got the best of everything. They've got the best diplomacy. They can manipulate pretty much anyone. And we walk out of this pretty much at full strength. Alright, looking at the damage dealt on them. 42,000... 47,000, 35,000, they all they all did a good job, 42,000, 42,000, yeah, yeah, so they all did a ton of damage, took no damage themselves, and I barely used up any, actually used up about 100 wins of magic, and apparently that was a heroic victory, so I think this one definitely deserves a 10 out of 10. I'm sure the cost is a, is a little bit high. Uh, he's using up 7... Was it? Wait, hang on. Uh, no, there's 6 flammable wizards in there. The 7th is the, um, the Lord, which there's no limit on those. It is all lesser beings deserve. Right, looks like it's during the end turn. But yeah, one of the problems with this kind of Doomstack is that you're not really going to be able to get it until the late campaign. Ulf one prevails. Asurian protects. And it's super strong in auto-resolve as well. But yeah, I want to have a look at it, so just got to hurry up. I wonder if it would be better if commanded by Teclas, because Teclas can heal as well. Now, the thing is, the flammable stat doesn't affect Teclas, even if he's on his Phoenix Mount, but he's already able to get, like, heaps of ward save anyway. Come. I, I wonder if it would welcome. be better commanded by him. What do you wish to Because, yeah, he gets way more wins of magic. Those who speak the truth are always... It'd probably only be marginally better. Master of the White Tower. All right, let's have a look. That's uh, not this one. Where, where is that army? So your incomes, like seventy-five thousand, might seem like a lot, but for high elves, that's actually really low. You're making plenty of money, but you're also spending a lot. All right, look, where is it? Here it is. All that damage is due to attrition. All right, so looking at your trait, yep, flammable ward save for Phoenix units. This one here is probably exhilarated. Yep, so that gives us. Melee defense for Phoenix units. 
Income from post-battle loot plus 25%. Yeah, because we did make a ton of money out of that. And these should all just be flammable. Yep. Not max level, so you've got Sky Master over here for weapon strength. Yeah, it doesn't do that much. Uh, Heart of the Flame gives extra physical resistance. That's cool. Oh, you haven't gotten absolute control yet, so that could uh, increase or decrease the winds of magic cost for your healing spells. That's really good. And what about one of these? Would one of these help the phoenixes? You think Asurian would? See, that's for Phoenix Guard units. Adios is for dragons. Let me just check. Chariots. Athlan, no. It doesn't look like any of these improve Phoenix units. Unless I'm missing something. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, you already get plenty with it, as it is. But yeah, I'm going to rate it 10 out of 10. Um, the, the only concern is that, um, you know, if you're not making tons of money, you might be better off hiring wizards that have um, the entrepreneur trait. And yeah, I can see you've got a lot of entrepreneurs already in here. And looking at your mage capacity, well, you haven't used up all of it, so you can very easily just increase it further. I guess you just weren't prioritizing lots of extra money. Yeah, if you were to recruit those extra, you know, 10 or so, you'd easily go over 100,000 a turn. And it's not like you need the money, so yeah. It's it's just, it's like 10 out of 10 for, like, power, obviously. It's, let's see, how's its expenses? 22,000. Let's compare that to other armies. That's well, way more expensive than Sisters of Avalon Doomstack. Not that that really matters at this point. But yeah, it is It is significantly more expensive. If you have a look at these units, 488, compared to... Yeah, they're like twice as expensive. But they're a lot better. And they're cheaper than dragons. So definitely better than a dragon Doomstack. I mean, it's basically invincible. There's really... There's very few armies, like even four full stacks, that would be able to take this on and even walk out having done any damage to this at all. As long as this guy here remains hidden. And you got so much Winds of Magic, you can easily heal them all to their full capacity. Especially if you go and get that Absolute Control and uh, Greater Arcane Conduit, that'll help, and Magical Reserves. And if you could get yourself... Yeah, you can increase your Winds of Magic further with, like, those followers. Disciple of the Phoenix, if you just get more of those. And I think there's, like, Hoeth... I think there's another one you can get from the White Terror of Hoeth that can give you extra Winds of Magic as well. But I reckon you could pump that up to five or 600 without too much difficulty. So that would give you more magic. And then, of course, that's not even using the, the flame spells if you want to do that to take out most of their infantry. So, yeah. It, the only downside to it is it's inconvenient to recruit and maybe a little bit expensive, but that's just not really that much of an issue for the High Elves because they just don't have that sort of problem. So, yeah, I'm going to give this 10 out of 10. Super strong. One of the strongest High Elf armies I think you can build because it's basically invincible. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it, whether you think this is a great Doom stack or whether you think it's a piece of shit or somewhere in between. Um, appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.